Hi, and welcome back to Hacker 101. In this session, we're going to talk about what makes a good bug report and how you can be a better, more successful bug hunter. Before we get to how to write a good report, let's talk about why it matters. If you're already finding really good bugs, who really cares about the quality of your report? Well, you may understand why the bug is important, but that doesn't matter if the affected company can't understand it. For that matter, if you're not crystal clear, they may not be able to tell what the bug is or how it's triggered. That can turn a $10,000 bug into a $0 bug in a second. Your job as a bug reporter is to give the most useful information possible as concisely as possible. This lets them determine the validity and impact of your bug quickly. And while that's great for the company and their customers, of course, it also means more money in your pocket more quickly. And the better your report is, the less back and forth communication you need to have with the team, making everyone's job easier. So now that we know why this stuff matters, what actually makes a report good or bad? In my experience, the best reports are those that have a clear description of the bug, explain what the real world business impact is, gives concise reproduction steps, and shows working examples. These examples can be in the form of proof of concept links or payloads, screenshots showing a payload firing, or snippets of source code that show where the bug originates. Let's look at a couple good and bad examples of these things. First, here's a bad description. When submitting feedback, the title tag value isn't escaped, allowing XSS attacks. This description is pretty terrible on every level, and I think every tester has written one like this in their career. I know I have. Where does the title tag value come from? Who can set that value and what privilege do they need to have? What page or pages are affected? How does someone actually test this? To fix those things, we just answer exactly those questions. We explain who can do this, administrators, where they do it, the admin panel, and which page is affected, submit feedback. Following this, we give the specific steps to reproduce the issue. Log in as an admin, go to this URL, set the title field to this specific value, go to this other link, see the payload fire. These steps are, in my opinion, the most important feature of a good report. If you want to get your bugs through triage faster, this is the number one spot to build your skills. Do note that reproduction steps are sometimes not considered part of the description. This is the way Hacker One does it, but this is sometimes split into a separate section of a report. Now let's look at a bad impact. Attackers can add any HTML to a page, which is cross-site scripting. Okay, so attackers can do that. So what? What can an attacker actually do with that which affects the business? Is a page some specific page? What does a real-world attack actually look like here? Again, we answer those exact questions to fix this. We explain that an attacker is able to execute code in the context of the submit feedback page, allowing them to hijack a victim's browser to perform any action they can perform. For instance, making posts or sending messages. These are examples that someone evaluating the impact to the business can see and understand immediately. Now, a quick example of a very bad screenshot. I think that everyone has been guilty of submitting a screenshot just like this at one point in their career. That alert box could have come from any website at any time. What relevance does it have to this customer or this bug? This screenshot, while not perfect, is a lot better. It shows you the URL, the affected parameter, and that some cookie is readable from the browser. While this isn't a replacement for the other features we've talked about here, a good screenshot can really be a big help. Now, those are the key things when actually filing a report for a bug, but before you get to that point, you need to figure out what the impact of a bug is. To do this, the key thing is to think like an attacker. What can you do with your bug that would actually net you a benefit or take away from the business? If you can determine what's important to the business, you can generally figure out where your bug is applicable and why it matters. The value of your bug is completely linked to this. To drive this home, consider removing all technical details from your impact statements. Businesses don't care about SQL injection or cross-site scripting. They only care about what an attacker can do with those things. Talk about the ability to access or destroy critical data. Talk about the fraudulent orders an attacker can put in. Those things have a real tangible impact on the business. Once you've started finding good bugs, improving your soft skills, writing reports, interacting with other hackers, answering questions by security teams, 
is the single biggest thing you can do to improve your bounty payouts. Do you have issues with spelling or grammar? There are tons of resources on the web to help with those things, and that's something that will help you out in a million different ways. Have your reports been closed as not applicable when you think they shouldn't have been? Maybe you should work on the way you present things in your reports. Consider the business impact and frame your bug reports around that. And my final tip to you is this. Go read bug reports. On HackerOne, you can find thousands of reports from hackers ranging from the best in the business to absolute beginners. Whether a bug was $0 or $5,000, there will be something to learn from the report. Sometimes that'll just be what not to do, but there are plenty of great habits to learn from other hackers. This is a fantastic resource, and you should make use of it. As always, thanks for watching, and happy breaking.